We explain the events that led to the English Civil War. With the death of Queen Elizabeth in 1603, which may have come from the lead in her white face makeup, England found itself in a financial and political crisis. Elizabeth had taken almost absolute power over the parliament, church, and state, while at the same time she grew more withdrawn and depressed. Because of Elizabeth's policies, England was facing inflation, high unemployment, and costly wars against France, Spain, and Ireland, with no functional colonies to balance out the costs with mercantile. Sir Walter Raleigh's Virginia colonies were not panning out. Her policies also created joint stock monopolies and piracy, which were raising prices. She had addressed the House of Commons in 1601 with what was called her Golden Speech, which talked of her love of the people and of being queen despite her financial mistake. Her death left behind no heir, so the throne passed to Scotland and her cousins, the Stuart family. The next king in line would be James VI, who was the son of Mary, Queen of Scots, who Elizabeth had executed. The English dubbed him James I. James faced resistance on two fronts. One was due to his belief in divine right and his moves against the limited monarchy, the parliament, and the Magna Carta. The other resistance was due to his continued push against the Catholic Church. It was during his reign that the 1605 gunpowder plot was discovered. Guy Fawkes was found in the cellar of Parliament with kegs of gunpowder, ready to blow up Parliament and King James in the name of Catholicism. The discovery of the gunpowder plot pushed James's anti-Catholic policies even further in England and Ireland. He also had problems that developed with radical Protestants who thought the Church of England had too many Catholic elements like cathedrals and choirs, rituals in the Book of Common Prayer, clergy dress, and top-down leadership. These dissenters were English Calvinists who called themselves the Puritans. They believed in universal literacy, education for religious and civil life, a hard work ethic, predestination of saints, separate roles for men and women, and exorcism of demons. They stood against partaking in any activity on a Sunday, dancing, blood sports, gambling, drunkenness, theater, and religious celebrations like Christmas and Easter for their pagan roots. They advocated for harsh punishments for straying from the pure faith, including public shaming with stocks, cloth letters, or execution for blasphemy and witchcraft. Some stayed in the Church of England, hoping to reform it from within. Others became separatists, leaving England for Holland, and finding no work, went to Massachusetts, where they could live their faith without interference from what they considered intolerable other religions. Those that stayed began to get elected into the House of Commons, gaining political power in order to push back against divine right and push puritanical faith. When James's son Charles I took the throne, he pushed for even greater powers for himself. The Parliament pushed back by passing the Petition of Right in 1628. Provisions included no taxation without Parliament, no false imprisonment, no quartering of troops, and no martial law in peacetime. Charles agreed, then changed his mind. Then he tried to add more Catholic rituals to the Anglican Church. This is when the Great Puritan Migration to America took place. Those that stayed began to rally around Puritan leader Oliver Cromwell and his new model army, believing the Lord was on their side.